Welcome to 21st Sports Recap and Reaction for the Minnesota Vikings at the Denver Broncos in their Week 4 matchup played October 4th, 2015. We're going to go over every possession and the stats and give our breakdown and analysis. Let's get started off with the first possession. The Vikings would get the ball first. It was a touchback, and they start on their own 20. They would end up bringing the ball out to the 39, but Bridgewater was sacked by T.J. Ward on first down. And then on third and 15 from the 34, Bridgewater was sacked by Ware. And so now they would have to punt on fourth and 28 from their own 21. So now the Broncos would take over with about 11 and a half, a little less than 11 and a half minutes left in the first. They had it on their own 37. And on the first play from scrimmage for the Broncos, Peyton Manning hit C.J. Anderson, and he went 27 yards all the way to the Minnesota 36. They would end up bringing the ball down to the Minnesota 15, but a couple incomplete passes would bring up fourth down, and out came McManus to attempt a 33-yard field goal. It was good, and it was 3 to nothing Denver over Minnesota as the Broncos put the first points on the scoreboard with about eight minutes still left in the first. So now the Vikings would take over on their own 20 after the kickoff. They would bring the ball into Denver territory. When on third and seven from their own 49, Bridgewater hit Mike Wallace for an 18-yard reception to bring the ball to the 33. But then on second and 12, Bridgewater was sacked by Ray. And so that brought up third and 20. And they, only, they got no gain on third down. And so out came the punting unit on fourth and 20 from the 43 of Denver. And they punted the ball to the Broncos, who took over on their own 11 with less than a minute left in the first quarter. They would end up bringing the first quarter to a close. They did get a penalty before the first quarter came to a close, which backed them up to their own four, but they picked up four, and they started off the second quarter on their own eight-yard line. Peyton was sacked by Kendricks, and so out came the punting unit to punt on fourth and 19 from the Denver two. So the Vikings would take over at midfield on their own 48, with 14 minutes left before halftime. They would end up bringing the ball into Denver territory. They got all the way to the edge of the red zone, but on fourth and seven, they would bring out Blair Walsh to attempt a 38-yard field goal, but it was wide left, and so the score remained 3 to nothing. So after the missed field goal, the Broncos would take over on their own 28 with 11 and a half minutes left before halftime, and the handoff to Ronnie Hillman, he took it up the left side, down the sidelines, 72 yards for the touchdown. And that's the kind of thing that happens. You miss a field goal, and the next thing you know, Hillman runs it back 72 yards for the touchdown. McManus adds the extra point, and it was now 10 to nothing. Broncos over the Vikings with still about 11 and a half minutes left as that possession only took 11 seconds. So now the Vikings took over on their own five-yard line. So they had a penalty on the kickoff. They would end up having to punt after going three and out as they punted from their own six-yard line. So now the Broncos would take over at midfield on their own 43 with less than 10 minutes left before halftime. They would end up moving the ball into Minnesota territory when Peyton Manning hit Demarius Thomas for a 30-yard reception, which brought the ball from the Denver 47 to the Minnesota 23. They would then bring the ball into the red zone, but on third and four from the 17, a penalty for an illegal formation moved them back to the 22. Peyton Manning then got sacked for a 7-yard loss by Robinson, and so out came McManus to attempt a 47-yard field goal. It was good, and it was now 13 to nothing. Broncos over the Vikings with about six minutes left before halftime. So the Vikings took over on their own 20, and they would move the ball up towards midfield. And on second and seven from the 44, Bridgewater hit Diggs for a 25-yard reception. He ended up fumbling the ball, but they ended up recovering it. Actually, ended up being uh, challenged, but the ruling on the field was upheld. And so it would remain Vikings ball on the Denver 31. They ended up bringing it to the edge of the red zone as they ended up picking up a first down, getting it to the 20. But their drive would stall with three incomplete passes. 
and out come Blair Walsh to attempt a 38-yard field goal. It was good, and the Vikings had their first points on the scoreboard in this game as they now trail by 10 with the score Denver 13, Minnesota 3. So the Broncos would get the ball with a little over a minute and a half left before halftime. They had it on their own 20, and they started to move the ball. They got up third and 10 on the 31. Peyton Manning hit Demarius Thomas. He took it 24 yards to the Minnesota 45. But then Peyton Manning was intercepted by Barr. Anthony Barr with the interception gave the Vikings the ball with less than a half a minute left before halftime on the Denver 27. The Broncos then got called for having 12 men on the field. And then Bridgewater hit Wallace for an 18-yard reception that set up first and goal on the four. Bridgewater then went back to Wallace for a four-yard touchdown. And with the extra point by Walsh, it was now a three-point game with the score Denver 13, Minnesota 10. So now just seconds left in the half. Peyton Manning took a knee, and we would go to halftime. So it was 13-3, Broncos in the lead at halftime. And they would get the ball first in the second half. They start off with it on their own 20, and they would move it up towards midfield. And on first and 10 from the 46, C.J. Anderson would end up running it four yards. And then Peyton Manning hit Emmanuel Sanders for a 43-yard reception. And then there was a horse collar tackle penalty. So now it's first and goal on the three. And on fourth and one, they elected to go for it. And Peyton Manning hit Owen Daniels on fourth and one for a one-yard touchdown. And they ended up getting the extra point. And so now it was 20-10 to 10 Broncos over the Vikings with 11 minutes still left in the third. The Vikings would then go three and out on their next possession, their first possession of the second half. They would punt the ball from their own 32. So now Denver would take over with nine minutes still left in the third on their own 16, but they would end up going three and out and punting the ball from their own 19. So now Minnesota would take over on their own 45 with about seven minutes left in the third quarter and they would go three and out on their second possession of the third quarter. So now the Broncos would get the ball on their own 12 with about five and a half minutes still left in the third. They would bring the ball up towards midfield and they brought the third quarter to a close, but they opened up the fourth quarter by punting the ball on fourth and one from their own 49. So now Minnesota would take over with just seconds ticked off the clock in the fourth quarter with still almost 15 minutes left to play in this game. And they had the ball on their own three yard line. And they got out of the shadow of their own end zone and they would bring the ball up towards midfield. But on first and 10 from the 43, Bridgewater was sacked by Williams and Jackson and he was dropped for an eight yard loss. And then they ended up with a fourth and one on the 48. They elected to go for it and they gave it to Adrian Peterson. He punched it up the middle, and he took off 48 yards for the touchdown. Blair Walsh added the extra point, and it was now a three-point game with the score Denver 20, Minnesota 17, with 10 minutes still left to play. So now the Broncos would take over on their own 19 after the kickoff. They picked up 15 yards on first down as Manning hit Thomas. Manning went back to Thomas, but it was intercepted this time by Smith. And so now the Vikings would take over at their own 47 with nine minutes left to play, down by three. And so they moved the ball into Denver territory. They were faced, they had a first and five on the 29, but then a penalty for a face mask would bring them back to the 44. But then they picked up 21 yards with a pass from Bridgewater to Diggs. But they would end up having to settle for a field goal on fourth and two from the 15 as Blair Walsh came out to kick a 33 yarder. It was good and this game was tied at 20 apiece with just over five minutes left to play. So now the Broncos would take over on their own 24. Peyton Manning hit Emmanuel Sanders for a 17 yard reception that brought the ball to the 41. They then got another first down that brought them into Minnesota territory with an 11 yard pass from Manning to Fowler. Then 
on second and five from the 43. They picked up a first down on a penalty for pass interference against the Vikings. Anderson then ran for 13 yards to bring the ball to the 25, but they weren't able to get another first down. And on fourth and six from the 21, McManus came out to attempt a 39-yard field goal. It was up, it was good, and it was now 23-20 to Denver over Minnesota. So now the Vikings would get the ball with less than two minutes left to play and a chance to win this game. So Minnesota started out with it on their own 20. Bridgewater went to Peterson. He picked up nine yards, brought it out to the 29. Then on third and 10 from the 20 after Bridgewater was sacked by Vaughn Miller for a nine-yard loss, Bridgewater then scrambled for 10 yards and picked up a first down at the Minnesota 30. So then Bridgewater ended up hitting Mike Wallace for a 17-yard reception. Now it was first down at the 47. An incomplete pass brought up second down, and Bridgewater was sacked this time by T.J. Ward. He forced the fumble. Vaughn Miller recovered, and that gave the Broncos back the ball, and all that was left to do was for Peyton Manning to take a knee in the victory formation as this game came to a close as the defense came up super clutch for the Broncos, and they hold on to win 23-20, and they remain undefeated at 4-0, and the Vikings fall to 2-2. And so it was quite the game. I mean, this was as close as could be, came right down to the wire, and they won by just three points, and a really impressive performance by both of these defenses in this game. But the Broncos' defense just came up with the big plays when they really needed it the most. The Vikings were playing really spectacular on defense as well. They held Peyton Manning to just 17-27 for 213 yards. He only had one touchdown. He had two interceptions in this game. And Teddy Bridgewater, 27-41, 269 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. Adrian Peterson, eight, uh, 16 carries for 81 yards and a touchdown that 48 yard run Hillman 11 carries 103 yards he had that 72 yard touchdown CJ Anderson 11 carries for 43 yards in the game Bridgewater actually had three carries for 23 yards as well Demarius Thomas nine receptions for 93 yards Emmanuel Sanders three receptions for 68 yards Anderson had one reception for 27 yards to go along with his 43 yards to give him 70 total yards Diggs had six receptions for 87 yards for the Vikings. Wallace, eight receptions for 83 yards. McManus had a really big game. Three for three on the field goals, two for two on the extra points, including that game-winning field goal as well. Blair Walsh, two for three on the field goals. Of course, his missed field goal ended up being the difference in this game. Two for two on the extra points for Walsh. Let me look at the defense. Harris and Marshall and Ward each had six tackles. Ward had two sacks and a forced fumble. Of course, that sack and the forced fumble that ended up winning the game, sealing the deal for the Broncos, come up with that huge clutch play. Roby had a forced fumble as well. Von Miller had a sack. Nelson had a sack. Stewart forced the fumble. Ware had a sack. Williams had a half sack. Jackson had a half sack and Ray had a sack all for the Broncos and for the Vikings Barr had an interception he was their leading tackler with five tackles Kendricks had a sack Robeson had a sack and Smith had an interception we look at first downs the Vikings had 19 first downs the Broncos had 18 and on third down the Vikings 6 for 16 37 percent they had three times as many third down conversions as the Broncos were just two for nine on third downs, just 22% converted. Both teams were 100% on fourth downs. The Vikings went for it twice. The Broncos went for it once. Total net yards, 344 for Denver, 325 for Minnesota. Net rushing yards, 144 for the Broncos, 113 for the Vikings. Net passing yards, 212 for the Vikings. And Bridgewater was sacked seven times by the Broncos' defense for a total of 57 yards lost. Peyton was sacked twice for a total of 13 yards lost. They had 200 net passing yards in this game. We look at penalties. 
nine penalties against the Vikings for 63 yards, eight against the Broncos for 40 yards. And in the red zone, one for two for Minnesota, just 50%. One for three for Denver, just 33%. The Vikings had the ball longer, 33 minutes and 54 seconds versus just 26 minutes and 6 seconds for Denver. So there was some troubling signs, you know, with the passing game there for uh, the Broncos. But the defense came up big once again. And they definitely got, you know, some running going. Hillman, of course, you know, 72 yards on that huge run. But still, he had over 100 yards altogether on the ground in this game, plus 5 yards off of the one catch. But also, Anderson added another 43. They ran the ball. You know, 22 times and passed it 27 times. So it was a pretty balanced attack. And by running the ball, you know, that was able to keep their defense from having to be on the field the whole entire game. But the defense just came up so big for the Broncos. They have one of the best defenses in the league. You know, the seven sacks. You know, they did not have uh, any interceptions, but they were forcing those fumbles. I mean, they were just stripping at the ball. They forced three fumbles, although they only recovered one. But the one they recovered was at the most important moment there at the end of the game when Von Miller recovered that fumble off of the sack by T.J. Ward. So the defense comes with that huge play. They're playing really strong in the trenches. Minnesota's defense was looking really good, too, in this game. And, uh, you know, Peterson had that 48-yard run but only 81 yards altogether in the game. So he wasn't really getting much done until he broke that big one. But that, you know, kept them in the game, made it uh, definitely competitive in the way their defense was playing. Bridgewater was looking pretty good too, but he was under heavy, heavy pressure. So, you know, he's still just in his second year, and that defense is just stellar in Denver. And in mile high, the Broncos are tough to beat. So even with uh, not really a big performance by Peyton, you know, at moments he looked good, but he was, you know, feeling the pressure as well from the Minnesota Vikings. They got a young defense, and they are some ball hawks in that secondary. Of course, linebacker Barr got an interception, and then Smith ended up with an interception. But let me know what you think in the comments section below. Definitely interested to read your thoughts and opinions. Thank you very much for listening. It's greatly appreciated. I hope you're having a good day and had a great weekend and enjoyed all the sports.